Okay guys, this is it. Just get ready for the hottest boat this summer. I'm on the Saxdor 270. Come with me, this thing is fun. Test drive, walk through, coming right now. but she goes bloody fast too. So I figured, why don't I just start the video at almost full speed, at a leisurely 36 knots. I already had a little drive at this boat this morning and damn, this thing is fun. Well, I've got the 300 horsepower Merc on the back. We've got, they had the XXL leg on it before and they changed it to the XL leg. So that means the prop moved up a little bit. And I gotta say, from what I've just experienced this morning, belting around at 40 plus knots, which we will see in a second, it's delightful. It's absolutely delightful. This has gotta be, for me, one of the most enjoyable sports boats in this size category I've driven this year. Um, what do I mean by that? <laughs> this is what I mean. Feel the grip. Okay, I'm doing 40 knots, 5,900 revs. I've just hooked it into a turn. I got no cavitation. This thing just wants to go. And then you just hook it around. I'm on flat water quite clearly, but she just wants to go. I've got, I'm full of power here. It's just, it's a dream. So let's just wind it back to normal speeds and just give you guys a demonstration of what's actually going on. This boat's about two and a half ton, uh, empty, you're probably about three ton fully loaded. The standard's a 225 horsepower and um, I'm running a 300. Um, to, just to put things back into perspective, I'm now winding the boat back to her fast cruise speed of 27 knots, okay? So, can you notice the, the, the audio difference from the motor right now? It doesn't even feel like it woken up because it hardly has. This boat has got so much capability, so much power at this weight and this engine setting is wonderful. I, it, it's also telling me that the 225 is going to be fine as well. Um, but what have we got? We've got a very deep V um, cutting entry like you'd be familiar on all Saxdor models and many other brands. Um, we've got double air step hull and a deep V profile underneath the waterline, so she's going to be great offshore. Um, I can't talk to you about what it's like in rough weather or whether you get water over the bows because I'm on a lake and I'll have to do that another time. Um, but at the 27 knot cruising speed, my rev range is 4,200 to 4,300. I've got a 300 litre tank of petrol on board and I'm currently running 40% on board. Just going to take it to a little turn here before I run out of lake. And I've also got a, a 55 litre water tank and a 55 litre holding tank. Obviously they're empty on this test boat. It's just me and uh, Donut on board and some camera gear. So she's a pretty light boat, but the performance is amazing. The, the, the helm position, this is this new Mercury throttle. I don't mind it because I'm finding myself very comfortable to drive from a standing position. I did have the safety connected on before. I'll show you how easy it is. You can just hook it on like that. But this thing, you feel so secure and locked in at the helm, you just don't feel like at any time, obviously in the late conditions, you're gonna be thrown away. And, and you've got nice high sides here. So there's always something to grab onto. Um, from a social perspective, I can obviously look around, talk to all my guests. I could probably run with a mate or two in the bow as long as they were lying down. So you can carry a few people. Um, so we were doing that 27 knot speed. I've just now brought the rev range up to 4,600 to 4,700 and we're sitting on 32. So sorry, I'm actually gonna call 27 knots the slow cruise with this engine setting. I'm gonna call that the slow cruise. So, 32 knots. Nah, I'm gonna say 33 knots is actually the fast cruise. That feels better. 4,800 to 4,900 revs. 
is giving me 32 to 33 knots. It kind of feels about right there. Now bear in mind, I'm in fresh water. So that's gonna have a different density to salt water. So you might get more performance in salt water. It'll be interesting to try that out because I would imagine, similar to when I go sailing down south or up north, for you Northern Hemisphere people, in the cold air, the air density is greater. You use smaller sails. I reckon it's probably the same thing with water. I don't actually know. I'm just kind of joining the dots. Um, so now let's bring it up to 5,000 revs. At 5,000 revs, I'm getting a speed return of 34 and a half knots. I feel like I could maybe give it a little bit of a trim up there. A little bit of a trim. There you go. I've just seen 35 knots and 5,000 revs still. So let's give it a bit more. Yeah, we've got plenty more in the rev range on this boat. 5,250 revs is giving me 36 knots. This is easy boating. It's really easy boating. I've got, I'm, I'm excited about this because it's, it's just such a simple boat to drive. You, you could be a pretty ordinary boat driver and you could get out and hit the harbour and belt this thing around and it's going to look after you and you're going to come back, I'm guessing, quite dry and feeling fantastic. Let's just turn around the corner here and give it wide open throttle. <laughs> yes! 38 knots, 5,900 revs, 6,000 revs, 6,000 and climbing, 41 knots, giving the trim up a little bit more. The boat feels rock solid, rock solid. 6,050 revs I've seen at 43 knots, 43 knots. And Actually, I'm going to do that turn at 40 knots. Let's hook it in. Feel the power, feel the grip. Look, there's no cavitation. I'm going to tighten that turn. Yes! Oh, this is great! This is great! Awesome. You can, so, what am I learning? You could drive this thing around all day long at full revs and it's going to forgive you. It's not going to do silly things, don't do that. Learn how to drive the boat, be sensible, but I'm just saying you could do it. It's, um, yeah, man, imagine the possibilities of this boat. Imagine the possibilities. So what do we have? I'm saying the slow cruise is 27 knots. I'm saying the fast cruise is 32 to 33 knots. I've got 43 knots top speed out of this boat. Probably drop it down a little bit when you're fully loaded, because we're running 40% fuel and no people on board but that just gives you really, really healthy transiting speeds, really, really healthy fuel burn, and just look at the thing. It's gorgeous. It looks so good from the drone. Anyway, join me. Let's take it somewhere sunny and pretty. I'm gonna give you a detailed walkthrough coming right up. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna get straight into it. There is so many great unique, cool, and useful features on this boat. And I also, well, I know, a 27 feet is a size that suits a lot of people because you can overnight on it, you can offshore in it, you can handle it by yourself, and you can take out a good bunch of people. So um, this is gonna be mass market material. And from what I just experienced on the water, it is a lot of fun. So what do we have here? Um, a raised bow lounge, which is really cozy and good for a couple of people. I'm sitting on the anchor locker. It's quite deep. It's, it's massively deep, actually. You could put like 10 fenders in there if you wished. I've got a cleat here, a cleat here, waist out, water in, um, navigation lights on the side, and we have a moderately sized rub rail going all the way around the boat. These cushions here, um, they are held down with press studs, but the wind doesn't get in there. So there's just no movement. You just don't have to worry about them because of this design here. Grab handle here and here and check this out. If you're worried about getting your feet, they've thought of that. Very clever. Next thing worth pointing out, this boat has got the flexi teak or, or, or the whatever you call that stuff, that soft teak stuff. I love this. Um, it retains temperature in winter time, for example. Um, it still keeps your feet warm. Speaker there and speaker there. On the starboard side, um, it's actually raised as opposed to the port side. So we'll cut to a shot of that. But where I see that being useful is if you were pulling into a fixed dock, which was higher, you might as well just pull in on the starboard side because you've got some built-in steps to depart the boat on the starboard side, whereas it's a bit lower on the port. Um, that window is tough and glass. You could step there. 
one, two, three drink holders, single windscreen wiper. These press studs are for a whole cover. These cushions can stay in place. They do not need to go downstairs. Put the cover on. Um, I would just put a, a beach ball in the middle of this to hold the cover up so the rain um, comes off it or even like a bean bag. Um, so as we step down this step here, you have a courtesy light just here. That's gonna be one probably blue. We've got a stainless steel cleat here, slightly forward of the windscreen. Beautiful wrapped glass. It's a three piece windscreen um, uh, in the middle of the boat and she's a center console design. Coming back now, hopefully you just get all that into picture. You see we've got the, uh, the T-top support. So this is the forward support and doesn't provide any hindrance to your visibility. Um, having just driven the boat, doing hard turns, fast turns at 40 knots, it's great. And it's, if you needed, not that we had any rough water today because we're on a lake in Poland, but if you needed to hold on, that would be a great spot to hold on to um, should you feel the need. So um, just get all this into the picture. I'm gonna talk about, um, uh, you know, maybe go back and look forward or whatever works for you. Um, we'll talk about the helm, then we'll go down in, in a second. Forward, um, we have this matte material here. I didn't really have any issues with glare on that little white spot, but we're not in Australia, so the sun's like a little bit more gentle here, but didn't have any issues with that. Then the two windows forward go down into the cabin. Then we come back to this really modern, stylish helm. It is compact, does everything you need, um, and it is easy to get around. So starting on the starboard side, working my way across, I've got two little little storage nooks here, not really big enough for your phone, like your phone hangs out there. Uh, you might wanna do a phone holder on this side, one of those uh, suction cuppy ones, and then use this for keys and other bits and things if that's what you wanted to do. Um, just got a single uh, flat screen Simrad here. <coughs> I don't see there being space for two screens on this display. Two drink holders for driver and navigator, so that's good. We've got the new Mercury throttle just here, and it's mounted somewhat um, close to the wheel in terms of its relative space, but you do have a little bit of space underneath for your legs, and I found it quite comfortable. The seat is super easy to adjust. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, and standing or sitting just was, was quite a pleasure. Um, bow thruster centrally mounted. On the port side, we have the switch panel. So we've got navigation, anchor, cockpit, deck light, logo light, logo light, that's cool. Panel light, roof light, uh, roof spotlight, display power, wiper on, bilge, forward, bilge, mid, bilge, aft, and horn. So that's right, this boat has three electric bilge pumps. So you have one uh, basically at the, the forward air step. Um, then you have one around the fuel tank location and a third one right down the back of the boat. And you can even, they're all electric obviously, you can even operate the, uh, the forward and the aft bilge pump via the emergency manual uh, bilge pump handle, and then you've got a Y valve. So you know, in an emergency, it's, it's, it's quite a safe setup. I thought that was quite clever. Um, this is the joystick operation for the trim tabs that we've seen on many boats before. That is absolutely my favorite way. This is a high performance boat. This is a fun boat, and that is an absolute great way to get the most out of your driving experience. Um, the wheel is adjustable. Um, you know, I've got the seat back right now, but I've got like this much space in front of my belly. So bigger blokes don't see them having an issue. Um, and you can still create more space by putting the wheel um, up uh, would give you a little bit more space or maybe even down as well. Um, key start on this one. Uh, here's your emergency just here below the key. You've got a little storage pocket below that, which is gonna be good for phones and keys and wallets and stuff. We have a 12 volt charging on the port side underneath the trim tab. So you could actually put a phone in this, in this uh, little pocket here and, and have it on storage. And then we've got a stainless steel um, uh, footrest with a, a nice rubber backing on it. So if you're barefoot um, and it's colder weather, this is going to be great. Um, okay, so much to talk about. I'm, 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 I'm actually excited. I'm so excited about this boat. It's, it's gonna be a winner, this one. So when you are at the helm, you come down a little four inch step. So if you're a tall bloke or, or, or woman, you will have lots of space. So I've got my arm outstretched and I'm just touching the roof there. So that's what you've got available to you. If you're in the seated position, um, this is a new seat operation. I haven't seen this one before. New seat design too. The uh, nice big handle that you lift 
and it slides super easy. So me at five foot seven, I had it all the way forward and that was my driving position and I gotta say it was very comfortable. I even found myself like, it's called it sitting back a little bit and putting one leg out like that. And if I was doing a long drive, I could see myself just relaxing like this, having a good time with a coffee in the drink holder. It would be great. Um, but transi transitioning to standing is just slide back like this, boom, easy, easy peasy, not a problem. And if you wanted to just raise your height sitting on the bolster, it's not very comfortable to sit up on that bo this bolster to be fair. I would probably want a cushion, um, but I don't see the need because this seat goes up and down. So why would you do that? Because you can actually just raise it. It's a telescopic seat. So that's, I think they've probably thought about that. Um, okay, carrying on. Um, the T-top is great. Um, excellent sunshade, really, really forward. You know, it's forward of the windscreen and it's aft of the, um, uh, of the aft passenger seats. It's a fiberglass frame with um, down lights. They're plastic lights, so they're not gonna corrode. And you've got powder coated aluminium uh, structure within. I noted that this light above the helm turns off individually and those other two lights above the table are operated with the switch. So if you are you know, dining of an evening and you want light over the guests, but you're just, you decide to drive somewhere and you need to knock out your, your light above the, the helm, can do. So that's, that's kind of clever. Next thing, the sides, like it feels like quite a safe boat. Um, I, I did use the safety when I first uh, did some go fast stuff because I've never driven this boat bef until today and I just didn't need it. it. It just, it digs into the turn. It's predictable. It doesn't cavitate. It goes hard and it goes where you point it. So um, there was no like funny, oh, what's going on here? Like, you know, the, the dancing maneuver that you have to do on some boats, which get the wobbles, um, didn't have that whatsoever. But if you were unsteady on your feet, grab hold, grab hold, grab holds, like it, it's not an issue. Um, so I think I've got everything there. So when moving back, um, the next thing it's worth pointing out, these seats, super easy to operate and super easy to set up in the social situation. So um, it's, it's as simple as that. And look at this, you, you, you're ready for lunch. I didn't, sorry, I didn't point out the Navigator has a proper uh, aluminium footstep there. And whilst it's metal, they've, they've softened off the side. So if someone brushes their bare foot against it, they're not gonna cut themselves like they often factories forget to um, tidy up those little bits and pieces. So, Let's just, I'm just gonna be lazy and put one of the supports out. There is two. Look at this. How good is this? 27 foot of boat. And what I can see Saxdor doing now, I've spent a bit of time on a few of their models now. I, I talk to the guys quite regularly. They're just building boats that go really good, don't burn much fuel. They're, they're very good looking and it just gives you options. You know, like. A boat like this, you know you can cut up the chop. You know you can go really fast. You know you can average high cruising speeds and burn low fuel. So the day is yours. It's your boat life. So you kind of, if you want to stay on the boat and have a wonderful lunch and enjoy vistas like this, um, they're really setting up these boats for that style of boating. It's not just a commuter, go somewhere, go off and do other activities. You can do that if you want, but it's kind of like, you do you. Uh, uh, that's the vibe I'm getting from this brand, and I like it. Um, but so, how cool is this? Tables here, we can order lunch or we can dine in. Um, I'm not going to, we'll cut to shots of this, but there's very easy access to the fuel tank. Now that is um, CE and NMEA, I think that's the, the American standard. Um, it, it's, it's both, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Um, then we have a storage compartment underneath um, there's an uh, area underneath these passenger seats here where you can just throw guest bags, but there's, a, there's also storage underneath the floor, which if you chose the air conditioning or the heating option, that's where that would be located. Um, so I'm just gonna come around and show you what's at the back of the boat. Just passing some more speakers. Actually, I haven't turned the stereo on yet. We should do that at some point, see what it's like. Um, this is the aft structure, powder-coated aluminium of this T-top. She's just rock solid, this thing. 
Um, so this is going to be good having all these supports. I remember on the first 320 that I, I, I tried, it was a little bit wobbly up the front, but they've, they've since fixed that and they've carried that idea through to this uh, 270 and it's rock solid, well done. Um, this is not the last cleat on the boat. So this is very handy for coming into a marina because it's within pretty easy access from the helm. I see this boat and I've actually just demonstrated some parking. Keep watching to the end of the video if you wanna see that. Um, but from the helm, you go from there to that cleat along the side and to this cleat, it's a, a pretty easy operation. You can just keep your guests seated and out of the way. But how nice is this? Like. This is all you do you once again. It's, it's your own Barbie station. Well, I love it. So um, quickly, fuel in, very, very deep fender locker and also shore power is accessed from the starboard side. We have a matching one on port side, which is drained and can be a ginormous esky. Um, but this is great. Like uh, deep drink holders, you can put a tinny with a, with a cooler in there. So that's fine. We have an electric fridge, um, that's just a Dometic electric fridge, a fancy tap fitting. This is a Corian, you could use this as a little cutting surface if you want. Um, we've got the single, uh, so it looks like it's just cold water and stainless steel single sink. But this is just see-through glass, two burner. That looks electric to me, but I don't actually know. Um, and then we have one drawer, two drawer. So you can do your picnic setup, some of your, your cups and your plates, and a few extra bits and pieces in there. There's nothing there because the sink is behind there, obviously. We have the cooker and then the fridge where you can put stand-up bottles and extra bits and pieces, and then you can do extra chilling just there. But this, this new addition, which I saw on the 205 yesterday, maybe go over there and look back, or you know, I'm not sure if you've got it all in shot. Um, this feels like your own personal veranda. Like this is the vibe I'm getting from this. I love this timber, I love the glass. It's bringing maybe like a, a, feel, a sense of security for some people who are maybe unsure or don't use boats as much and just want to be closed off from the sea at the transom or, or want to make sure or know that their kids are not gonna fall in the water or their little dogs. Um, but it's really cool. You know, you can use this as a seat. Um, it gives you a sense of security if you're here operating at the, uh, at the mini bar. But with these open, that's also another hangout just here. And then we've got, when you are in picnic mode, this is your veranda. This is your place to jump into the water. You've got enough space for a couple of people to do their thing. We've got a, a, a telescopic swim ladder that comes out from here with a handle just here so you can pull yourself up. And then we have extra cleats here and here, which are gonna be perfect for your stern lines. So you, your springers, we have the two midships cleats for those, and then the bow and the stern cleats. So it's gonna be suitable for tying this thing up at the dock quite easily. Uh, another handle on this side, and you've got a swim shower just here. So you probably come out of the water. Let me just double check. Yeah, it was on. Yeah, it is on the starboard side. So you come out of the water on that side, come over here and have a shower. And at night time, I can see the, uh, the, the courtesy mood lights. It's going to lift this whole thing. It's, it's going to look great. It's gonna, just going to look gorgeous. Um, engine options. Uh, standard with the 225. Don't know how it goes with that, but I reckon it'd be pretty good considering what we achieved with the 300. Uh, what did we get? Um, well, you've just seen uh, on the video because I'm going to edit this all up into the same one, but a you know, 27 to 33 knots all day long, no problems. I'd say that'd be the same situation with the 225 and 43, probably plus when you do it in salt water. Now, um, where I'm standing right here is technical access technical access that's going to be um, getting you into batteries, bilge pumps, etc. And we do have some drains going out the back of the boat. And the drain setup on this boat, it is okay to leave this boat on a swing mooring. The water will drain out and off the boat. So it's not a problem. Um, so I think I've covered everything there. Radar mast is reasonably sexy, aluminium, black powder coated. You could put um, uh, you know, all your aerials, etc. up there. But um, okay, I think that's it. Come on down. Let's have a look at the interior. I'm just gonna swing that 
seat around so you can check it out. By the way, the table does drop down. You can turn this into a bit of a sun lounge. Um, well, not a sun lounge because you're going to be in the shade, but a nice book reading spot. So come on down. Welcome. Let's get that out of the way. I'm just going to take my shoes off. This is cool. Um, you know, compared to the 205 that I tested yesterday, uh, well, it, it's, it's vastly different. This is a boat that you'd have a, a Mediterranean holiday on. This is a boat that you would um, have little adventures if you're in uh, Sydney or Miami or whatever. You just do your summer week away on the boat because look at the amount of space we've got. Um, this, this bed is comfortable. It's long. It's wide. It's padded all the way around. We've got padded surfaces above and to the side, and we've got these cushions here. I've got a reading light on starboard. I've got an opening hatch, so if you want to get some air through here, um, you can do that. And I've got LED lights all the way around to give me the mood, but I've also got the down lights for um, functionality if I need. And this whole area can be air conditioned. So um, if that's important to you, can do. Now underneath this bed, we've got bow thruster access all the way up forward, and then we've got tanks. So it's gonna be holding and water tanks are there. The fuel tank, centrally mounted because that's the 300 liters that's the most weight you want to keep that middle and low on a style of boat like this because it's all about the balance that's why the seats are in the middle you want to keep the the, the weight of the people and the fuel and, and, and the mass uh nice and centered to get the best performance okay so we've got a little vent just here we have this wonderful corian bench with another sink super little fancy tap and some storage so you put your your loo rolls in there and some of your toiletries. You might have like one of those Heli Hansen toiletries bags, one, two, only two people are gonna overnight on this boat, so that makes sense. And check this out, proper toilet, electric, 55 liter holding tank. So, um, you know, once again, that just makes a boat like this inclusive. It makes it an overnight boat, it makes it a lunch boat. So electric macerator toilet into a 55 litre holding tank. The grey water goes into the holding tank as well. And this toilet surround can pop out if you um, need access to it for cleaning. Now, this step here will actually flip up. I can't remember how to do that, so I'm not gonna try and do it. But, this, but you've got access into the bilge just there. On the port side, we have the fuse board. Uh, but just keep looking at this because they're doing some smart things at Saxtool. Um, Obviously we have all the fuses, it's got the brake, it's got the 12 volt. Um, if you had a gen set or, or, or 240, I guess that would be here too. But um, you can access all the fuses, they pop out if you, you know, if you trip something. But hello electricians, how annoying is it when you can't get to these panels? Um, so any electricians watching, you won't have that frustration on this sax door. Uh, see a stereo control just there. Um, another thing which is just wonderful to see, this panel, we'll have to cut to a shot of this, um, one, two, three, four switches, we can access the whole back of the helm. So once again, all the wiring, well actually, I'll just do it. I'll just, we're, he, we're here to check it out. Okay, let's do this, I'll do this. And, and what I'll do, just give me the camera and close that door and then you'll see. So, uh, here you go, see that? I love seeing this on boats and, and yeah, a lot of these mass producers have a tendency to hide this sort of thing. Um, okay, that's fine. I'll give you the camera back. Um, but Saxdor are clearly not. Um, so I'm happy to see that because, you know, if you do have something that you want to change or addition that you want to make or extras or whatever, um, I'll do that. I'll do that later. Cause keep, keep this moving. Let's head up on deck. Um, if you, if you do want to make changes to the boat, uh, electricians, mechanics, tradies, they cost money. So if they're spending time getting access to the panels, it's quite annoying um, because it's going to cost you. But um, yeah, guys, uh, what's my wrap up? I am blown away by this 270. Um, I think this is going to be the boat of the year for 2023. I think this is going to be next summer's hot boat. Um, it's as simple as that. It goes great, it's very sexy, it doesn't use much fuel, and it punches above its weight with features that everybody's gonna enjoy. So 
you know, if you want to take it and put it up on the beach, can do. If you want to go overnight, can do. If you want to go offshore and cruise for miles, can do. Um, you know, when you're ticking all these boxes and wrapping it up in a gorgeous package from every angle, um, you, you can't lose. So yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts. My name's Dan Jones, this has been Dan's Boat Life. If you enjoy this content, I make it for you. I don't get paid for the videos, so I'd really appreciate you to support me, like the video, share it with your mates, possibly consider getting onto my Patreon. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, see you on the next one.